Hello, good morning guys and a good Friday to you. So obviously you've read the title of this video and before I go diving in, I think it's important to just give you a little bit of background. Well, I'm coming up four years, well it is four years practically now, that I have had the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero 6 motherboard, whichever way you want to put the acronym around. And in those four years, I've been running a Ryzen first generation 1700X, the Ryzen 7 1700X uh, CPU. And I've had that overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz. I managed to run four when I first got the, C the chip, but to be honest, running at four gigahertz required the voltage to be just above a level I didn't want to run for a daily driver. But anyway, without going on forever, the reason I'm mentioning this, running the Ryzen 9 at 3.9 gigahertz on all cores and running the memory as fast as you can because the Ryzen Infinity fabric and the memory speed, the faster it goes, the better the CPU performs, has created some boot issues. Now, if you followed my channel, and probably not because my analytics say that most of you are unsubscribed, so please, if you are able, subscribe to the channel. It would be helping me out. Now, as I said, I mentioned I've had boot issues and I've quite often achened my uh, computer to like an old car, a troublesome old car. Once it's booty and it's up and running, the machine and the overclock is absolutely stable. It will run for days. But sometimes, and I've noticed, especially when it's cold, it has a little wobble now and again. And this has not been just for myself. It was for other people with first generation Ryzen. And quite often, turning the socket off at the wall or knocking the power off on the back of the power supply would resolve the issues and the machine would boot up normally or you drop back into the BIOS with an F1 with an incomplete boot. You'd save changes but there'd be no changes made and the machine would boot normally. Now in the four years I've owned the Ryzen 1700X and the Crosshair 6 Hero, I've had two issues where beyond switching plugs on and off, the machine would not boot at all. In the one time I reseated the CPU and that seemed to put things back into the normal pattern of booting. But of a recent, my computer had a real wobble and I received a QR code of A2. And when the machine booted up, it would not go past this A2 error. And to be honest, I didn't quite understand the mechanics of A2 and how that would work. And in the end, I found out if I left the machine alone, sat at this A2, it would eventually go through its boot process complete and I get into Windows. But I'm running an NVMe drive and the boot should be quite, you know, like that. And it was slow. And I'm talking really slow. So doing a bit of deciphering because the Crosshair Hero 6 motherboard shows QR codes. A QR code is a 2 a uh, digit error code that has got uh, letters and numbers and those codes relate to certain things during the boot. Now A2 meant that there was a problem on the IDE interface uh, pointing towards a drive going dodgy, a SATA cable not being quite right. Whether that directly ties into the uh, NVMe drive I'm not sure because obviously that's on a different interface that goes directly to the CPU. But on a long story short, I did some investigations because I have three drives in my system, an NVMe drive and two SSDs. But on investigation, they reported as healthy and fine. So I pulled the machine out, stripped it down, so carry cabling wise, just to check everything was working as it should be and I could not find any faults. But it did make me wonder, all this time has my motherboard been faulty? And that's quite a possibility, so I know the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero has definitely had revisions, and for the time I've owned it, I've had all sorts of weird QR and error codes. 
that to be honest once it's booted up has worked and been fine. Now the only reason I'm referencing could the motherboard have been faulty, I do remember helping a friend build a specially binned KB Lake 7700K, it was a 5 gigahertz chip and he had an Asus Formula motherboard for that chipset and I remember that used to boot about 1 in 6 times, we took it back, it got tested, it was faulty you come back with another a new board so it could be that my motherboard has always been on the fritz since i've had it now would you believe in an unrelated incident my car as it's been not used a lot of recent over covid it uses a battery that is non-serviceable and i've noticed that the battery is not running correctly i swapped my car battery out to a brand new one it now does not do it now this coincidence comes into me looking on a post uh, online about the Asus Crosshair Hero 6 motherboard and boot issues and one of the suggestions was to swap the BIOS battery. <laughs> not throw it, not drop it on the table. The BIOS did not report a low battery, didn't say it was running out and it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. Now the BIOS battery in a PC in my motherboard sits just behind where the GPU sits so I had to remove the GPU to swap it out. Now most motherboards today all BIOS settings are stored in non-volatile memory meaning that when the computer's turned off it doesn't lose any of the settings. Back in the earlier days of volatile memory you needed a battery to keep that stored in and with UEFI BIOSes and the way they actually boot and store some of the boot settings maybe on the boot drive, things are a bit different. So why does a modern motherboard need a BIOS battery? Well, it can be for a few things. It can store the last boot state. It can store that when the uh, CPU was last inserted. It's also your clock to the machine, the time and date. So if that's not working correctly, it could potentially cause issues. Well, guys, I'm not going to lie, after I swap the battery out, and I'm just going to show you uh, this. This is, uh, close that down. This is an Aorus X570 Elite motherboard. I uh, will be using this motherboard soon. And just there, can you see, there is the BIOS battery. So nearly all brand new motherboards today, unless it's a laptop, you're still going to get a battery. And would you believe when I swapped this battery, it booted rapidly first time. I can't believe in the four years that I've owned this motherboard that this little thing may have been the cause of all the issues. Now, it's almost like the motherboard's having its last hurrah because this turned up this week. So guys, the Crosshair Hero 6, the Asus motherboard, we're gonna be saying goodbye because now we've got the Ryzen 9 5900X and that is gonna go, be going into the X570 Aorus Elite. So keep uh, your eyes on the channel build video and new PC setup will be coming up and something else I want to mention to you that I could have made this video well over a week ago said I changed the BIOS battery and everything has been fixed and hunky dory but that wouldn't be quite true I'm still having some periodic boot issues as I say if the motherboard's faulty I don't know or it is just the quirkiness of first gen Ryzen being on the edge of memory stability and issues but one thing I would say and I don't know if this is resultant of the BIOS update or the change of the BIOS battery but when my motherboard is up and running I get a double A QR code and that just means everything is okay now since I've owned this motherboard, I have never ever seen that in code in my life. It's never done that, not to my memory anywhere. So it just goes to show something wasn't quite right. 
Anyway guys, I wanted to try and keep this video as short as possible. I know I've uh, rambled on for a little bit there, but if you own an Asus motherboard or any motherboard that seems to be doing weird things and playing up, have you ever thought, just try and change the BIOS battery before you go any further because I can't believe that this little thing here may have been the cause of all my problems. But anyway, that's in the past. The Ryzen 9 5900X and the X570 motherboard is coming to my machine. Finally, a boost in FPS, I think. Anyway, as I said earlier, if you've not subscribed, if you enjoyed this video, go and check out some of my other stuff on the channel. I do simulation, sim racing, flight, computers, and I'm a mad passion interest in cars. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you very soon in more videos to come. Peace out.